All right, so in the previous video, I didn't realize that um, the bottom part was cut, but what you should know is uh, from this, I had shown that you factorize the common factor, and what remains is this x and that x bar, which now forms another bracket. It's the same term that we are multiplying um, um, itself with. So you will get x minus x bar squared. You will recall from the formula for variance that this is an integral component for the formula for variance. If we adjust it for degrees of freedom, then we have our variance. And what I want to do now is to talk about a regression. Now we understand something about correlation. We understand something about covariance. So now we want to talk about regression. Now, if you have a set of data, let's say now this is your data, this is your wage, this is your education, using the example we were working with yesterday. Let's say these wages are expressed in thousands, so 0.5 3, 8, 10, um, 18.5, 22.5, 29. No education, 7 years of education, um, 11 years of education, 12 years of education, 15 years of education, 16 years of education, 18 years of education. Now, you want to fit a regression line to this data in such a way that the distance between these observations and the line throughout is minimized because the distance between each observation and the line represents the predicted error. Now, <clears throat> here is the challenge. We can try any line that you fit, for example, will satisfy several assumptions, but there is only one unique line that will satisfy every other assumption that we want uh, to meet in regression analysis. Um, let's start with the simplest of them is that if you add the, the predicted errors, they should always give you zero. So any line that you fit, the predicted errors, the sum of the predicted errors will always be zero. So now it doesn't satisfy us that much. We need something that will minimize the residuals or minimize the various errors from the sum of the errors from um, the squared errors from the from the regression line. So what what econometricians settled on years ago is a method called ordinary least squares method. So in short, it's called OLS. <clears throat> now, our regression for wages, which we are calling Y, and for education, which we are calling X, would look like something like this. Y is equal to, let's use some Greek letters here, beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus an error. 
where or rather a disturbance term where this disturbance term here is a random variable uh, where this disturbance term has a mean of zero is a variance that is constant um, across all observations and so forth now this one would be an example of a population regression function now this is what is to be explained okay it is what we observe that's what we are observing in the data set before us this here is what has been explained by the model and this here is what the model failed to explain okay so so your 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 regression line is divided into this you can pretty much understand it in terms of these three um, components but now if because it's very difficult for us to observe population data for say the labor market the best we can do is to work with a sample of people participating in a particular labor market so we can rewrite this in simple terms our yi will be equal to a beta zero we are going to estimate using the sample a beta one xi we are going to estimate from the sample and there will be a predicted error for each error for each observation now what this tells you then is that our yi is actually equal to this component here is your predicted y so this particular yet you are seeing means it's something that has to be estimated from the sample this is your predicted y plus your new i now <clears throat> the method of ordinary least squares requires that we minimize the squared residual sum of squares which means we need to square this number and sum it across the seven observations the answer we get is called the residual sum of squares now we can rearrange this into mu get i is equal to we take this to the other side becomes y i minus y eight i right so we need to square this we square that and we also square this then we are required to sum both sides so we sum mu i squared is equal to the sum of y i minus y h i squared so the method that will give us values of beta naught and beta one head that fit the best regression line is called the ordinary least squares method what we have to do here we have to apply the method of calculus to be able to get the, the formulas for getting beta naught and beta one so <clears throat> we can rewrite this as mu yet i squared is equal to sum of yi minus what is mu hit i 
we know that it is this part here so we can put beta 0 minus beta h1 x i and we square it as you can see the only things that are unknown in this expression are beta 0 and beta 1 we know x because that's the data we have. We know y because that's the data we have. Do you see that? And of course, the residuals are generated by that relationship we would have estimated. So the method of calculus requires us to take, to do some partial differentiation. If you didn't do math in high school, you just have to bear with us, but I think you will be able to cope. So we have to differentiate these residual sum of squares with respect to each of these unknowns, and we do that in terms. So we first do it with respect to beta naught. Now, because the expression to the right hand, which is beta naught, has a power outside, so we differentiate first the power. So you bring the power down here and you multiply that power by this entire expression leaving the power. So that's yi minus beta h 0 minus beta h 1 xi. Then next you differentiate everything in here with respect to beta naught. Now, this becomes zero because this yi doesn't have beta much uh, with it. This also becomes zero because it doesn't have beta naught with it. The only place where we have beta naught is here. So if we differentiate beta naught with respect to beta naught, we will just get one. But there's a minus sign there, so we actually get minus one. That's the number we get, okay? Now, from methods of calculus, what we are actually doing there is almost, is it clear? For us to be able then to solve and get our beta naught, we must set this condition equal to zero, okay? So we simplify this expression and set it to zero. Actually, this expression, this minus one is multiplying that two, so it's actually minus two sum of y i minus beta yet zero minus beta yet one x i is equal to zero. <coughs> and you can divide both sides by minus two so that eventually you are left with sum of y i minus beta h naught minus beta h one x i is equal to zero. This is called a normal equation. Okay. Never mind about the word normal. It has its own origins which you don't have to know. Um, but you should know that that's the technical name that equation is given. It's called a normal equation. Now, if we solve this normal equation, we will get the formula for beta zero. Now, because you got several terms here, but there is subtraction in the brackets, we can distribute the summation sign to this term, to that term, to that term, and solve for beta zero. So that expression then, your sum y i minus beta eight naught minus beta eight one x i can be rewritten as sum of equal to zero, sum of y i minus sum of beta h naught minus sum of beta h one x i and all this you set to zero 
now because this is constant what is going to happen is when you sum it n times we are summing up to n times it becomes n beta zero okay so then that means this entire expression here is now sum of y i minus you are summing a constant n times that becomes n beta zero minus we can check this constant outside the summation sign and leave the sum to be with x only and we say this entire expression must be zero so mathematically to find beta zero we have to make this term with beta zero subject of a formula so we end up having n beta h zero you take it to the other side of the equation then you remain with sum y minus beta h1 sum xi. Now you are set to find your beta h naught now. To remain with this only, now you have to divide both sides by n. So n over n beta h0 is equal to sum of yi over n minus beta h1 sum of xi over n that cancels that and you remain with the beta h0 from our previous video the summation of y over n is actually y bar and the summation of xi over n is x bar beta h1 x bar this is the formula for finding beta naught. So if I know beta 1 and these two I get them from the sample, I can estimate beta naught by just plugging beta 1 by the mean of x subtracted from the mean of y. That's how you get your your your, your estimator for for beta not okay the formula we use to estimate that then so we can do the same with respect to to beta one so we said we have some new i squared is equal to some y i minus beta not h minus 1 xi squared so we have done the differentiation with respect to beta naught now we are, we are going to do it with respect to beta 1 beta 1 head so now we are going to do partial differentiation of mu i h squared over d beta 1 because there's a power we first differentiate the power so we bring the power here and we multiply it by the rest of the expression minus beta h 0 minus beta h 1 x i then in the next stage we differentiate what we see in the brackets here with respect to beta 1 everything that doesn't have beta 1 becomes a zero in that process and we remain with this so if we differentiate this expression with respect to beta 1 so this becomes 1 because differentiating beta 1 with respect to beta 1 is 1 and that 1 is multiplying the x and there's a minus there so we have a minus x i and we must set this equal to 0 now 
we can take this minus sign and bring it here because well, all these things are multiplying each other so it doesn't matter whether the minus sign comes here or we put it there we put it um, anywhere else respecting the brackets and so forth so this is minus 2 sum of yi minus beta x 0 minus beta x 1 xi times xi equal to 0 so we can divide both sides that is by minus 2 and divide your 0 by minus 2 what you get is the sum of yi minus beta x 0 minus beta x 1 xi by xi equal to 0 this is your normal equation 2 it helps us find this slope parameter estimate this slope parameter okay so from what we have done so far we already know how to find beta yet not because we have a system of simultaneous equations here so we can use the method of substitution in this expression we can put y bar minus beta at 1 x bar in place of beta naught so that everything is now in terms of y and x and beta at 1 beta at naught is eliminated by this process of substitution so then it means our sum y i minus beta at 0 minus beta at 1 x i by x i can be rewritten as sum of y i minus here let me first use a bracket so that you can see what I'm doing minus beta at 1 x bar right then minus beta 1 get x i right everything by x i and this should be set equal to zero okay um, we can now simplify that by breaking this bracket so that we actually have y i minus y bar plus beta at 1 x bar minus beta at 1 x i everything by x i and this should be equal to zero as you can see we can do some rearrangements inside the bracket there and factorize I see here there's beta 1, there's beta 1 so I can factorize and here I have terms um, in y only so this can be written as sum of and I can open my corner bracket yi minus y bar is, is one component of this and so I want my xi to subtract my x bar so I'm going to factor out minus beta at 1 and in doing so it means that we now have minus and we now have a plus there so we'll start by x and end by x bar like that and then we close brackets we have our xi outside and we say this is equal to zero now what you observe is we can easily rearrange this we are almost there please don't faint uh, so now what we what we have there is we can now distribute the summation sign or 
while we are also multiplying everything in here by x, or we can start by multiplying by x just to make life easy. So we have y minus y bar. If we expand this bracket, so we are bringing this xi to multiply all the components in here, we will have xi here. Then we will have minus theta here to 1 xi minus x bar by xi equal to 0. Then we can distribute this summation sign so that we have sum yi minus y bar by xi minus beta yet 1 xi minus x bar by xi is equal to 0. We want to find a formula for beta yet 1. So everything here that is beta yet 1 must go the other side of the equation. And starting to write that, I have beta yet 1. Oh, where is my summation sign? Um, sum xi minus x bar by xi is equal to the sum of yi minus y bar by xi. Right? So for me to get beta at 1, I have to divide both sides by this expression here. So then it means my beta at 1 is actually equal to the sum of yi minus y bar by xi over the sum of xi minus x bar by xi. Now there's something, if you remember one of the, the results that we had in the previous session, we had something like this. One of the results which you have to recall, I think we had sum of x minus x bar by x by y. We showed that, that this will give us x minus x bar by y minus y bar. I think you remember that. And we showed that x minus x bar by x will give us x minus x bar squared. You remember that? Now, if we play around those, those results here, you will see what you will get. This entire thing will become sum of yi minus y bar xi minus x bar using the same. If I put y and y and x there, I would still get that. Okay? And then we are dividing that here using this result, sum of xi minus x bar squared. Now, this, this particular relationship helps us realize the link between regression, covariance, and correlation. You remember when I started, I told you that these three concepts are central. If you understand those three concepts and their interrelationships, then you are home and dry in this particular course. <coughs> now, if we multiply this expression by one, where we think of this one is one over n minus one, divided by another one over n minus one, okay? Up there, you have sum of y minus y bar x minus x bar. I've omitted the i there, but just to save space, but to know that it's there all the time x minus x bar squared, right? 
So this one over n minus one cancels that one over n minus one. That's what I mean by multiplying by one. We haven't changed anything. What you have there is the same as what you have here. Now, this expression you have here is your covariance. Do you see that? Your covariance is the sum of the product of these deviations of y from its mean, x from its mean, divided by n minus 1. So actually, this is covariance of x and y. But this here below is the variance of x. Do you see that? Variance of x. So it means that my beta at 1 is equal to covariance of x, y, over variance of x. So if I'm just given the covariance of x and y, and I'm given the variance of x, and, and I'm asking this question, tell me, what is the effect of x on y? What's the size of the effect? I just have to divide the covariance of x and y by the variance of x. The answer I get there is an estimate of this slope parameter, which measures the effect of x on y. Do you see that? 